Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zanan. I'm a research scientist from JD.com. So today I'm going to present our work on uh, adaptive experimentation with delayed binary feedbacks. Uh, in a short experimentation uh, explanation, uh, by adaptive experimentation, we're referring to the multi arm banded experiments, which in contrast to the classical ABN test, will dynamic change assignment probability to each treatment arms during the experiment based on the realized outcome. So naturally, there's a challenge extending the bandit to work with delay response because at any given time, the bandit, when a bandit is making a decision, some feedback may not be realized yet. So in this talk, I'll present our approach to resolve such problem. Uh, as far as I know, uh, we're the first uh, paper to propose and implement a practical solution that can implement it for this problem. All right, so this is the uh, outline of our talk. Um, we'll start with some motivation and challenge and, and followed by a methodology. Now we'll talk about some simulation result and a case study uh, in and end, we'll conclude the, the talk. Um, so to give you some background, this project arises from our experience, uh, experience developing as experimentation platform. That's the platform we provide to advertiser uh, so they can compare different versions of ads and uh, figure out what's the best version of ads to serve. And uh, from our experience, uh, we see that multi-arm bandit has become very popular for online experiment. We see a lot of usage uh, from advertiser. Also, we see this uh, same is true in the industry trend. However, the existing solution uh, only applicable to immediate feedback, such as click-through rates. Um, but it will fail, uh, use the same procedure will fail with delay feedback, such as conversion rate. But conversion rate or other uh, similar delay feedbacks, metrics are more relevant often uh, in many user cases because much closer tied to the business revenue, business OKR. So, our problem is to try to extend the banding algorithm to metrics with delay response. <clears throat> In this talk, we'll focus on the conversion rates. Uh, it's a metric that is very important to e-commerce, a company like JD, but similar idea can be applied to other similar delay binary feedbacks. Uh, and so here we define the conversion delay to be the time between an ad click and its conversion. So in the graph on the right-hand side, you can see that this is density of conversion delay for the same SKU, but with different ads creative and audience. What we want to show, or you can take away from this picture is, even for the same products, the delay distribution is quite different across ads creative and audience. What that means is the delay distribution needs to be estimated during the experiments and for each experimental group. Um, we, we could not rely on historical data, just uh, estimate one single delay distribution. Okay, now we want to talk, uh, let, let me talk about why we need the delay distribution and how does the delay distribution help us. So first I put here uh, the, what I call naive CVR here. This is what people normally do uh, in industry. Uh, when we talk about CVR, we use a total <coughs> number conversion at time T divided by total number click at time t. So obviously this is, uh, we're underestimating the eventual CVR because at time you compute this CVR, there's a lot of conversion that hasn't happened yet. Um, we can see this more clear in the uh, example here on the right-hand side. Um, so suppose we have a, a real CVR that equals to 50% 0.5 uh, and uh, the delay is constant. Now suppose uh, the delay always converts uh, sorry, the, <clears throat> the click always convert one hour after the, um, the original click. Um, then in this uh, figure here, uh, the bar, the gray bar shows you the number of uh, clicks at each time and the orange bar shows the number of uh, um, the conversion at each time. Suppose we want to estimate uh, a CVR at time T, T2, and use a naive CVR, we will uh, first sum up all the orange bar uh, here as a numerator, right? Then we sum up all the gray bar, those three gray bar as denominator. And you can see the uh, resulting CVR is underestimating the real CVR. Uh, the, the reason is um, the gray bar, we actually increase the gray bar here, but this gray bar, we know it has no chance actually resulting any 
any real conversion because any conversion will happen one hour later. So the way to crack this is to um, ignore the, this gray bar at T2, which only use T1 and T0 and T1 gray bar uh, in the denominator. So uh, this is the general idea how we crack the CVR and how we define the CVR2 here. Um, the general idea is we want to reweight the clicks and compute what, what we call effective clicks. Uh, so we reweight the click that uses the probability that the click actually will generate a conversion. So for more general case, when we have a delay distribution a tau like here, uh, the effective clicks uh, are based on the CDF of the delay distribution uh, weighted like this. Okay, so in practice, um, we actually don't know what the real delay distribution is. So we need to estimate this, but there are multiple challenges in estimating the delay distribution. Um, during the experiments, uh, when we're trying to estimate this, the observed delay is always right sensor. What that means, for example, if uh, we want to estimate at time t equals 1000, we can only observe delay conversion, um, the conversion delay is smaller than 1000. Right? The, uh, and at the time t1000, the clicks that has not converted yet, there are two possibilities. Either those clicks will never be converted in the future, like those red portion, or they will be converted in the future, but the delay is very long. We have, have not uh, observed that yet. So the blue portion here, for traditional, so this is very uh, different from traditional uh, survival analysis, because not all the clicks will eventually be converted. So in order to estimate the delay distribution, we need to figure out what the red portion is and, uh, and remove that part in order to estimate that. Um, but that requires us to know what the eventual CVR is. And that's actually what we want to begin with. Right? So this becomes a chicken egg problem. In order to solve this, we'll use the expectation maximization method. Intuitively speaking, we'll start with some initial guess of CVR then estimate the delay distribution, then update our guess of CVR, and then repeat until everything converges. So here's how we formally implement this EM procedure. Uh, and we will do this for each experimental group. So for each group, uh, we'll define uh, two latent variables. One is eventual conversion CI, the other is conversion delay DI. We assume they are independently distributed, uh, assume conversion CI is a Bernoulli a distribution and the DI follows some distribution with a CDF and a parameter lambda. Um, in our application, we assume our delay is actually exponentially distributed because this uh, distribution match our data quite well and produce a very nice analytic solution. But in principle, our procedure works with other distribution as well if that fits their, uh, their data. So, um, if a, our de delay actually follows expansion dis uh, distribution, um, we will get following a formula. So for the E step, we will compute the weight for each click um, and using this formula. Then in the, in the M step, the next step, based on the weight, we'll compute the lambda and theta. Then we do a for loop and until everything converges. So this is the basic EM procedure. The next step, once we get the estimate CVR for each group, we can use the Thompson sampling to compute the assignment probability of each arm. In order to use Thompson sampling, we need to know the distribution of estimated CVR. But in general, it's, very, it's not trivial to get that from the EM procedure. So we take a heuristic approach to assume the CVR follow a beta distribution and with um, those parameters, uh, alpha KT and the beta KT at time T. So um, alpha KT, uh, simply speaking, alpha KT is the total number of a conversion at time T uh, plus one. And beta T is the total number of effective clicks uh, plus one. Then we use this, or uh, once we have that, the assignment probability of an arm uh, is the posterior probability that the arm will offer the highest expected CVR. And we compute this and use a Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, on the left hand side, I show you a flow chart illustrate the whole entire system. Um, we'll, we'll begin with some initial uh, display probability 
um, can be an equal split and show the different version of ads to, uh, to users. And then we'll collect their um, behavior data that we uh, go into these circles and to do our EM procedure for each arm and compute an um, estimated CVR that we do uh, the confidence sampling in this part to uh, update our assignment probability. Okay, so here are a few uh, simulation results are comparing different banding algorithms. Um, so random, it is random bandit. Uh, it, it's quite equivalent to the ABN test. Um, the naive Thompson sampler um, is um, it's just ignore the delay and uh, use naive CVR. The DUCB and DTS um, are uh, use the delay crack CVR estimated from the EM procedure. For the difference, uh, the D DTS is Thompson sampling as we propose. DUCB is from some other literature. Uh, the fully Bayesian one uh, assume a beta prior and exponential distribution. Um, and we compute the numerical um, posteriors and use it as a with a Bayesian UCB algorithm. So theoretically, if the all the uh, assumption correct, the Bayesian, uh, the full Bayesian approach uh, sh should uh, uh, achieve is the best we can achieve. But this uh, approach is very computational intensive, and it takes more than hundred times of time of the other algorithm. But in the two, uh, first two simulation, we set the underlying delay distribution to be exponentially di distributed. And uh, you can see our DTS approach worked uh, pretty well in both scenarios and on par with a fully Bayesian approach. In the third scenarios, uh, we use a Weibull distribution as an underlying distribution, uh, but the, our algorithm are still assuming exponential distribution. And you can see that still worked pretty well, um, the DTS approach. Uh, in the fourth one, we use an uh, empirical delay distribution draw from a uh, critical data conversion data and uh, our approach still work relatively well. Our system was deployed last year. Uh, here we present a result of an actual adapt experiment after our product launch. To be clear, this is not a proper online AB, and AB test comparing our approach with alternative. This is the example of what our advisors see after their uh, experiment. So here we have um, two version of ads for the cell phone, a dark version and a light version. It's a for the same SKU, same item. In the first panel, it shows that our approach works. Uh, it shows that our estimation can gradually learn the eventual CVR and gradually directing more traffic to the better version. In the bottom panel, we compute what the naive CVR would have been and compared to the delay correct CVR. So the, the, the red line uh, indicates the naive one. Uh, what you can see is that our delay correct CVR is much closer, than, closer to the end of experiment CVR. That's what we want. Uh, where the, the red one in some cases still have some gap even at end of experiments. Okay, so to conclude, um, we propose a practical solution to support delay binary response in the uh, adaptive experiments. And our simulation shows that our solution outperform benchmark in terms of regret. Our solution is deployed in online experimentation platform of JV um, and has the potential to be extended to a delay continuous feedback. Um, so that concludes my talk, um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Zanon, for for uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting talk. If anyone from the audience has any question, please post in the chat or raise a hand or ask. I have actually I have two questions. One one is what was the main challenge in deploying this in production? Um, yeah, great question. So one main challenge in deploying this is in um, we need to keep track of all the order, all the clicks and the orders that happens. And, and so in the EM procedure, we need to assign weights and update the weights each time uh, for each clicks. So, so the engineering challenge to deploying this actually, how do you uh, have a proper data structure to maintain that? Uh, because the number of clicks can be quite large and to, um, to fast serve this, um, that's quite a challenge.
Okay, thank you. And how would you, oh, okay, uh, Praveen, uh, raise a hand. You can ask a question. Hi, uh, I have a quick clarification question in slide seven. Uh, you mentioned that like, it's different from the survival problem, your 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 problems. Uh, I'm just curious to know like uh, how we would be able to observe. So you mentioned that like, we would know whether the user will con convert or not eventually. Um, my understanding was it's, we would never know whether like the user will convert or not. Literally, we just have to wait indefinitely. So I was curious to hear about your application. Yeah, yeah, I think you're, you're definitely right. So we, we'll never know. That's a quite a core problem that we'll never know eventually. Uh, it quite to distinguish that, but we do have a, for in practice, uh, we do have a window that we would just stop treating them as a conversion. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, 